and welcome to Frost Over the World. Later in the programme, Benazir Bhutto's widower, Asif Ali Zadari. And the question, is the $100 barrel of oil only the start? We'll take a look at China and the run-up to the Olympics. But first of all, the flashpoint of current violence, particularly in Africa, Kenya. Following the post-election violence throughout the country, President Kibaki has bowed to international pressure and indicated, in a sort of on and off way, the possibility of con conciliation talks with the opposition leader, Rayla Odinga. Now, the view for that would be to try and bring about some form of power sharing. But is that enough for an opposition which feels cheated out of a rightful victory? Joining me now to find the answers to those questions, I'm delighted to welcome from Nairobi, Ryla Odinga. Ryla, it's a great joy to have you with us again. Um, in the, would you just tell us what the situation is today, in the sense that, I mean, if Kofi Annan is a mediator, would you agree in those circumstances to meet with President Kibaki and Kofi Annan or not? Yes, David, uh, the question has never been about meeting with President Kibaki. I've said I'm ready to meet with President Kibaki. Even yesterday with Mr. Kufua, it is Kibaki himself who refused to have a meeting uh, because we had said we wanted to have some kind of uh, a, a, a pre a, a, a arranged uh, uh, talks. But he, of course, completely uh, refused. It is on the document which shall be prepared by his own people. So I will be very ready to sit and talk uh, in the presence of Mr. Kofi Annan. Well, that is, that is important news. That is very important news. Kofi Annan would really be a, be a help in that situation. And, uh, and what would you hope that would come out of those talks? What, what, what is the solution to the current situation as you see it? Well, uh, we have a, a, a situation of injustice. We have the issue of rigged elections. President Kibaki knows very well that he did not win the elections, but he has rigged himself with the help of an electoral commission. So this is what we need to fix. This is the genesis of the problem. In other words, the violence is a consequence of the rigging, and we should never lose track of that. I think that in order to have a lasting solution, we must find a way out of it. How do we fix the rigged elections? In my view, it is by a rerun of the presidential elections. And do you think, do you think the Electoral Commission um, should be abolished and there should be new elections? Certainly, yes, David. What happened was we have been protesting for over one year uh, that President Kibaki was flooding the Electoral Commission with the hand-picked cronies of his, with a view to using the commission to rig elections. We had had an arrangement in 1997 where President Moi allowed the opposition to nominate half of the Electoral Commissioners. Kibaki then, as a leader of the opposition, nominated three commissioners. But he trashed this arrangement, uh, arguing that the Constitution allows him the sole right to nominate and appoint the commissioners. All the members of the com commission, save for two, are basically his cronies. One of them is his own personal lawyer, the vice chair. So this commission was selected to just do the rigging, which is what they have done. And therefore, it needs to be abolished if we are to have uh, proper elections. And tell me something, uh, Ryla, if a situation emerged where it was suggested, offered to you, that you could share the presidency in a fair way, 50-50, share the presidency with President Kibaki, would you consider that? Well, you know, David uh, was not interested in power for the sake of power. We wanted to see some fundamental reforms carried out in our country, which Kibaki denied us a, a chance to do in his first term. We had agreed then with him that we were going to bring a new constitution for this country. 
which has been prepared, but he has denied us the right to midwife it. We wanted to bring other legal reforms in the country to devolve power from the center to the periphery so that we can ensure equitable distribution of resources for our, to our people. We want to deal with the issues of corruption. We want to deal with the issue of ethnic discrimination. All those will have to be factored in, into an agreement if uh, we were to agree to a power sharing arrangement in a coalition government. And in fact, in terms of, in terms of the, the future and the developments and so on, um, in the power sharing, there could be, you're saying there could be power sharing between you and President Kibaki. Yes, uh, that arrangement, but it will have to be for a definite period of time. And then we would then have to agree on what kind of arrangement. Is it co-presidency or is it a succession or uh, like the, the Burundi style? All those can and, and need to be negotiated in advance uh, so that we could then give President Kibaki a decent exit uh, out of the current quagmire that we have. And do you think that you could, if you were leading Kenya, that you could stop all this violence, or 600 people killed, 250,000 displaced. Do you think that uh, the violence can ever be stopped now? Certainly, yes, uh, David. This violence can and must be stopped. It is senseless. Kenyans have lived together for a long time very peacefully, save for uh, occasional uh, flashes of ethnic clashes, particularly in the Rift Valley and parts of the coast. But that is merely because of the land issue. There has been land disputes which have not been resolved by the government. We have proposed ourselves as the ODM that we'll introduce a comprehensive land reform which will ensure that land as a factor of production is accessible to the people who want to use it for productive purposes. But the current violence which is related to el elections can stop as soon as the rigging issue is resolved. So the people are asking, where is the guarantee that these same people are not going to repeat the same thing five years from now? That is the issue that we're dealing with. And what does that portend for the uh, uh, multi-party democracy in this country? So, so you really think, you really believe that it is possible that the Luo and the Kikuyu tribes can live in peace again. This issue, David, is not about the Luos and Kikuyus. By the way, the Luos and Kikuyus do not share a common border. Uh, in between the, the, the Luo land and Kikuyu land, there is a great rift valley in between. So it's only in some uh, urban areas where they live next to each other. The current problems, for example, in the rift valley, does not pitch Luos against Kikuyus. You have got the Kalenjin, you have the Maasai, you have the Turkana, the Pokot who live in the Rift Valley. So these things should never be portrayed as a contest between the Luos and Kikuyus. That completely misses the fundamental point. That the entire country is angered. I, for example, got the votes from virtually all of the 43 tribes of the country. I led in eight of the, uh, in six of the eight provinces. President Kibaki only led in two of those provinces, his own native central province and part of the eastern province. So I enjoy, I enjoy a cross-ethnic support. So the issue is not ethnic at all. It is basically about the rigging that President Kibaki has done, which has annoyed virtually all Kenyan communities. And do you think, Reiner, that events are moving very fast, do you think that uh, you will be president of Kenya by, by this summer? I am very confident that the people of Kenya will find their way. I do not think that it is possible to stem the tide of change in our country. People who desire and want change. President Kibaki represents the status quo, 
the old order and they don't want him. That's why they voted overwhelmingly against him and for change. And I believe very strongly that very soon we will have that change in this country. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us, Raila. We, we really appreciate it very much and we hope to see you here again in this country soon. Thank you so much, David. I'm very happy to, have, to, to, talk, to have, talk to you again in the new year. Thank you. There are thanks to Ryla Odinga there for that exclusive, up-to-the-minute uh, conversation. After the break, we shall be switching to the subject of Pakistan, and I'll be talking to the late Benazir Bhutto's husband, Asif Ali Zadari.